What's going on guys? My name is Bart Komar and Christmas is my favorite time of year. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make 10 of my favorite Christmas decorations that you can make for under 10 bucks using only a circular saw, a jigsaw, and a drill. Let's get started. Welcome to the Komar Project. Number one. All right, so the first project is probably my favorite one. We're gonna be making a couple of snowmen out of some two by fours. I made marks at 8, 14, and 18 inches, which is going to give me three different sizes for the snowman body. And you can play around with it. They don't have to be the same exact dimensions as I have. As you guys will see, I'm making another snowman along with this one, and it's much smaller. So it's totally up to you. After cutting them out with a circular saw, I took a piece of sandpaper and gave them a good once over. You don't want these snowmen to have jagged edges because you're going to be handling them. And who wants a splinter on Christmas, right? Next, I applied some wood glue to the ends of two of the two by four sections, and with a long clamp, I clamped them all together. Then I could take that middle two by four and just give it a little bit of a twist. And that's what's gonna give the appearance that the snowman has three separate sections. Let's say you don't have a long clamp or you don't wanna wait for the glue to set up. Not a problem, we can use a little bit of CA glue, which is just super glue, and put it on the ends. And with some activator, it's pretty much an instant bond and we're ready for paint. I'm using a can of spray paint because it's super easy and I can get into those little nooks and crannies with it. So I applied one coat of primer and a coat of paint and now we can give these snowmen some faces. And I'm just using some acrylic paint that I stole from my kids room and a paintbrush. But if you don't have any craft paint, no big deal. You could totally use a Sharpie for this as well. You'll see on the next snowman that I use the Sharpie to paint on the eyes. You get a little bit finer detail with it and I'm not that great with a paintbrush, so a Sharpie really worked well. And these faces, just get creative with it. I mean, you can have a happy or a sad snowman, or you could have one that's totally stressed out. Um, that's totally up to you, just have fun with it. Now that our snowmen have personality, let's give them some hats out of some burlap. I cut a section that's about 11 inches long and then I wrapped it around the snowman's head, probably about half an inch from the top. Then I applied the CA glue right through the burlap and it kind of penetrates through to the two by four and then with some activator makes it stay there permanently. Next I took a piece and cut it down the middle of it. Then I can kind of roll it onto itself and this is gonna make the brim of our snowman hat. And I went through the same process of using CA glue as I did before to kind of keep it in place. And then to give our snowman a little bit of flair, I took a ribbon that I picked up at my local craft store and I just wrapped it around the brim and then on top of the hat as well. So for all these materials, the burlap, the two by four and the ribbon, I ended up coming in at $9. And I was able to make four snowmen out of a single two by four. And I changed it up a little bit on each one with a different face and different ribbons and things like that. This is a totally fun project that you could probably even involve your kids on. Number two. All right, for this project, we're gonna be making a couple of book stacks and we're gonna jump up a size from a two by four to a two by six. I made marks every nine inches and then used a square as a guide for my circular saw to cut them all out. Now a two by six already has rounded edges and that's perfectly fine for this project. You can just move on to gluing them up. But I found that using a three quarter inch round over bit and giving those two by sixes a little bit more of a curve looks a little bit better, but you can totally skip this step. I applied a generous amount of wood glue to two of the two by sixes, making sure that I stayed away from the curved edge because you don't want glue squeezing out right there because it's kind of a pain to get it out later on. But then all you have to do is throw on a couple of clamps, make sure it's nice and tight and let the glue dry. And after about two hours, I was able to get them out of the clamps, give them a once over with some sandpaper and throw on a couple coats of paint. All right, so this is the fun part of trying to figure out what you wanna put on your books. And you can pretty much do anything you want. If you have a favorite book title and you wanna put that on there, go for it. Or if you wanna do something funny and Christmassy, you can go with naughty, nice, and an attempt was made. Anything can go on these books, just have fun with it. 
Then to finish off the stack, I cut a piece of inch and a half wide ribbon, CA'd it to the backside of the stack. Then I wrapped the ribbon all the way around, making sure that it's fairly tight, and I could use the CA glue to glue the other end to the stack. Then you can be done with it or put a bow on it for a little bit more bouginess. If that's a word, I don't know. Number three. For the next project, I picked up a 16 inch by 48 inch sheet of 3 8 plywood, and we're gonna be using it for three projects. But the first one is a joy sign. So to start, I cut off a piece that is eight inches wide, and then I gave it a good sanding because plywood has a tendency to chip out. Then for the border, I picked up a piece of three quarter inch by half inch pine, and I laid it on top of the plywood to get an accurate measurement. Then with the jigsaw, I was able to cut the first piece and then take measurements off of that to make sure that the border is perfect all the way around. Next, we can glue our border down using some wood glue and a couple of clamps. Now, clamps are great, but it does take some time for that glue to dry. So to speed things up, I just use my nail gun and I can move on to painting it. After the primer dried, I gave it a quick sanding and I applied one coat of white paint to the border. Then after the paint dried, I masked off the border with painter's tape and I put down two coats of red paint on the inside. And then I also sprayed white paint on some crafting letters that I picked up at my local hobby store. And these letters were super inexpensive. I think I paid a buck for the J and the Y together. And the Joy to the World circle, I think it was 250 so for under five bucks I was able to get some really cool lettering that will make this sign really pop number four all right so this one I'm calling it free because everything that I use for this project I had in the house and it's probably one of those things that everyone has in their house. I started off by cutting a fairly aggressive about a 60 degree angle into a branch that I got from my backyard. Then about 10 inches or so from that angle cut, I ended up making a 90 degree cut and this is going to make for the bottom of the Santa Claus and yes, we're making a Santa Claus. Next I grabbed a red solo cup and cut off the bottom and then the top portion I cut into three even pieces. This is going to make the hat and the beard for our Santa Claus. After masking off the middle section of the log with some painters tape, I applied some hot glue to the top side. Then I could take the solo cup with the red facing out and press it in. Then after the glue set up, I was able to use my utility knife to cut the rest of the hat design out. Repeated the same exact process for the bottom portion of the Santa Claus, but this time the white portion of the solo cup is facing out, which is going to give our Santa his full beard. Next, I grabbed a Q-tip and cut off the ends of it, and I'm going to be using that for the nose and the little fuzzy ball on the end of the hat, and I'm just using some hot glue to attach it. Now, not everybody has a hot glue gun, which is totally fine. You can use some acrylic paint to do the same exact thing. So you're gonna paint some red for the hat and then white for the beard. Except for the beard, you really wanna lay it on thick. You want it look like it has some texture and that beard has been growing for the last three, 400 years. So just lay it on thick. And then for the nose, some cotton balls. And since I made three of them and they're all different heights, I thought it'd be a good idea to hot glue them together and then put a bow on them. I think it's one of those decorations because it's so natural that it will look really good outside. So this is going out front. Number five. 
All right, for the next project, we're gonna be making some candle holders. And I grabbed an old 4x4 that's definitely seen better days. But it really doesn't matter what it looks like because only one side is gonna show, only the top side. So after ripping it down with my circular saw, took it over to my bench and gave it a quick sanding. This is pretty important because we're gonna be painting that top side. So you wanna make sure that you have a nice, smooth finish. Next, I grabbed a inch and a half Forstner bit and drilled a hole deep enough so that my LED candle can fit flush in there. Then I can put some paint and primer on it. And for some variety, I had a couple pieces of oak that I was able to stain and that's gonna give it a little bit more contrast. Next, I grabbed a piece of wrapping paper and I cut out a piece because we're actually gonna wrap these uh, candle holders with the wrapping paper. So just make sure that you have one edge that's perfectly straight and then we can apply some CA glue to it, use a brush to spread it out and then just press the four x four into it. And then we're just gonna repeat the whole process until that four x four is completely wrapped. Then after the CA glue had a chance to set up, I was able to flip it upside down and cut all the corners with a utility knife. Then I folded all the corners, kind of like you're wrapping a present, and then I applied some CA glue to the bottom side of that 4x4 and just folded in all those flaps. Then just make sure you run your fingers on all the creases so that they look sharp because a 4x4 still has a little bit of a rounded edge, so just running your fingers on that wrapping paper will make it look a little bit crispier. Number six. For the next project, we're gonna be using the same piece of plywood that we did on the sign, and this time we're gonna draw a 12 inch circle. Then with the ruler, I divided the circle into 12 sections, and then I just highlighted every other section because we're gonna be cutting those parts out. Oh, and I didn't mention that we're making a large ornament that you can hang on a wall or you can put it on your mantle. So on top of the circle, we just needed to draw something that looked like the top of an ornament. Then using a jigsaw, we cut out the shape of our ornament. And because not everybody has a large Forstner bit, I drilled a smaller hole and I used my jigsaw to cut out the center of the, the hanging section. And just make sure you give it a really good sanding because the plywood does have a tendency to chip when you use a circular saw or a jigsaw. Next, I numbered every other piece of the ornament. And then in the middle of those two sections that we're not gonna be using, the two longest ones, I put an X on them because that's what's gonna make up the spine of this ornament. And then with a circular saw, I just freehanded all the cuts until I got all of them cut out. And then I could use one of the pieces that I marked an X on it as a spacer to get all my dimensions correct on this ornament. So it looks fairly circular. Then I applied a drop of glue to all of our pieces and I laid the spine right across them. Then with a brad nailer, I just put a couple of nails into all of them and then the glue's actually gonna hold it. It's not the nail that's that's holding it. And then I applied some stain to it and you can either go with a stain or you can paint it. It's totally up to you. And the stain that I'm using is called Special Walnut and it really brings out the richness in this cheap plywood. Next, I grabbed some tinfoil out of our kitchen and I cut out a piece that is a little bit longer than the top of our ornament. And I just started folding quarter inch pieces, one onto it itself. And then when you pull that tinfoil apart, it kind of looks like the top of an ornament. Then I can apply some CA glue to our tinfoil and our ornament. And I didn't use an activator here because I kind of want to move that tinfoil around a little bit if I need to, um, because the CA glue is going to set up fairly quickly without the activator either way. So it just makes it better not to use it for this part of the project. But here I'm taking a little bit of twine and I actually do use the activator. Once you hit it with that spray, that CA glue is going to be instant. So it's going to give us the ability to take that twine and wrap it around the, the circular hanging portion of the ornament. So you can either wrap it like I did or you can wrap the entire thing. I think that might actually look cool as well.
number seven. All right, for this project, we're gonna be using our last piece of plywood and we're gonna be making a Christmas tree. So I grabbed a one inch wide ruler and I marked a section on the bottom of that plywood. Then from there, I measured 24 inches out and I connected all the corners, giving us a triangle. Then I divided our Christmas tree into one inch pieces. And then I also cut off one inch off of the side and off of the bottom. The side section is gonna make up the spine of the Christmas tree and the bottom part, well, that's gonna be our stand. Then I numbered all the pieces one through 15 and I used my circular saw to cut all of them out. Again, I'm just free handing this. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if you want to put a straight edge against it, totally can. After they were all cut out, I gave them a quick sanding and I grabbed the spine and the base. And then that base, we need to split it in half. Now we need to make those two pieces fit into each other. So what we're gonna do is cut out a notch on each one of those that is identical. And that way we can slide those two together. And again, I'm using a jigsaw for this, making sure that I stayed within the lines because you don't want this uh, connection to be loose. You want it to be fairly tight. And with a little bit of CA glue, that's gonna lock it in permanently and we can start working on getting the spine fitted. So I placed it up against our stand and marked the width of that slot and then also the height of it because it needs to slot perfectly over one of those pieces. Next, I grabbed all the tree sections and I separated every other one into two separate piles. Then I grabbed number 15, which is the largest section, and I glued it about two inches off of the bottom, and I used a pin nailer to secure it into place. And to space all of those sections out, I just grabbed one section plus two other ones standing upwards, and I marked the line. This is gonna give me about an inch and seven eighths in between all those sections, but you can also play around with that as well. Then on the back side, I placed all of my tree sections in between those slots. And that's gonna give us about a you know, three eighths to a quarter inch reveal between all of our tree branches. And then number two and number one, you really don't need because we're gonna be making a star. Actually two stars. All right, so after our tree is done, I can apply a little bit of glue to the two side notches on our spine and slide it over the base. Then I put some spring clamps on it and let it sit until the glue dry. Then we can apply some paint. So these are little tiny bells that you would see like on a wreath or some other decoration. And I was able to pick them up for three bucks at my local craft store. And with a little bit of hot glue, I was able to attach them randomly to the tree, the front and the back. And then you can call it quits or keep going with some decorating. And I put a couple of LED lights all the way around it and a little bit of wire garland, which kind of brought the entire thing together. Number eight. All right, now that we have our tree, I'm gonna show you guys how to make two very simple ornaments. So the first one, you just take a piece of wire, you tie a knot at the end of it, and I know it's kind of difficult to tie a knot on a wire, but you just want it tight enough so that when we put our bead on it, we're gonna be sliding beads through it. You don't want it to fall off. Then we're just gonna alternate sliding a bead and the ribbon onto that wire. And then every other ribbon section, you actually wanna make it smaller. So you're gonna be punching the hole a little bit closer. And this is gonna make this ornament look kind of like a Christmas tree. And then you can also reverse it. You can start with a smaller section on the bottom and work your way up. And then it kind of looks like a like an acorn. For the second ornament, we're just gonna take some cutoffs from the branch we used earlier on the snowman. And then I'm gonna grab some cardstock. I need brown and red. With the red, I'm gonna cut out a couple circles and they don't have to be perfect. They just, you know, they have to be circles. And then with the brown, I'm gonna fold it four times and then sketch something that looks like a cactus. And then after cutting it out, it's gonna look like an antler. Then I can spray some activator on the backside of our cookie and CA glue onto the antlers. And then once I put those on, it's an instant bond. We can flip it over, put our little red nose on it, draw a line down from there to the, to the bottom of the cookie, and then add a couple of eyes. And we got ourselves a cute little reindeer ornament.
Number 9. For the next project, we're going to need 12 inch galvanized wire, some wire cutters, 24 gauge floral wire, and our trusty duct tape. And we're going to start off by making a wreath frame for our wreath. I cut the larger wire so it makes a 12 inch diameter circle and use the piece of duct tape to secure the end cut. Then I did the same thing, but this time I made an 8 inch circle. Then I took a piece of the same wire and I bent a hook end two inches apart from each other and I cut it off with some wire cutters. Then I can take one end and crimp it around the larger circle and the other end around the smaller one. Then I repeated the same process until I had four of those hooks around our circle and then it was still a little bit wobbly so you can take some of that thinner wire and wrap it around as well to kind of stabilize it or you can just use hot glue. Hot glue works really great in this instance. Now that we have our wreath frame it's time to decorate it. And I picked up a 20 foot bundle of evergreens for 16 bucks and $10 worth of different decorations. This is going to be enough to make three different wreaths. This bundle came already stranded, so I cut out a section that was roughly three to four feet, and I started attaching it to the frame using the floral wire. You just wanna make sure that it's nice and tight so it doesn't come off. Next, I took another section of the evergreens and I laid it the opposite way of how the first section was going. This is gonna kind of fill out that wreath. And then I started wiring it in and as I was going, I started putting in the decorations, but I'm not wiring those in. I'm just kind of sticking them in and see how they look. Once I had my decorations in and the evergreen was all wired into the frame, I can flip the frame over and start wiring all those decorations in. It just makes it a lot easier to do it when it's flipped over instead of kind of working it as you're putting in the evergreens. And then you can call it done or you can put a little bit of fake snow on it and I, I like putting it on because it kind of looks cool. Number 10. For the last project we're going to be making a modern tree out of a 2 by one piece of pine. I measured two and a half inches from the end and marked a line and then I drew a line from one corner to the next giving me a roughly 120 degree angle. Then I measured 24 inches out from the end and then over at my workbench I can use a circular saw to make both of the cuts. After making the second angled cut I measured 24 inches on the second piece and now I can lay my bottom section over it and mark the ends so that we can make that cut. After I cut them off camera I placed it over the bottom section to mark that angle. I used a good amount of glue for the top section and then I clamped it together with some spring clamps. For the bottom portion of the tree I used some brad nails because I wanted to continue working on the base because it's a little tippy still so I decided I'm going to add a couple of blocks to the sides to stabilize it. Now this next step is not necessary but I decided I'm going to use a couple of nuts to elevate the Christmas tree from those stabilization side blocks. I think it adds a little bit more character to it and it kind of looks cool. But then I also made another one that I took some smaller blocks and I put them completely flat on my workbench and that made it flat with the Christmas tree. So whichever way you go with it, as long as it's stable, it's good. Next I need to put in some wire between two sides of the tree and I probably should have done this before but I ended up drilling some holes, some pilot holes, just deep enough so I can kind of shimmy that wire in there. You guys will see in just a second what I mean.
All right, and now we're back to using that 12 gauge wire. So I ended up cutting pieces that's probably a quarter inch to a half inch bigger than the distance between two sides. And because the wire is flexible, I was still able to kind of wiggle it into place. And I think it just gives this tree a little bit more of a modern aesthetic and it allows me to hang some ornaments on it. All right guys, so there you go. Those are my 10 favorite Christmas decorations and you can make them over a weekend using very limited tools. In all, I spent 90 bucks on all the materials and I was even able to make duplicates of some of the decorations. So just be creative and have fun with it. And if you guys like this video, I hope you consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification. And in the comments section below, let me know which one is your favorite. I know I have my preferences, but I kind of want to hear what the masses think, what everybody thinks is the coolest decoration out of all of these. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I will see you guys next time.